Hey guys, so this is the Rose Technics Quiet C, a pair of in-ear monitors from Rose Technics. Now I had already reviewed their Truly Wireless earbud previously on my channel and I was very impressed by them. This time we have their in-ear monitors. Now after having used this for quite some time, there are definitely a few things that I appreciate about this pair and a few things that they can improve upon. So sit back, relax, watch till the end to decide if this one is your next in-ear monitor. Okay, first things first, let's get the unboxing out of the way. So as you can see, the Rose Technics Quiet C comes in a rather eye-catching packaging. It is quite classy and I'm a fan of that because the unboxing experience should always be special. Now inside the box, we get the user manual, a hardcover box to carry the IEMs inside, a couple of silicon ear tips of various sizes, a tool for removing the MMCX cables from the in-ear monitors, a very high quality braided cable that has MMCX connectors on one end and the version I have has a 4.4 millimeter audio jack on the other. And of course, we get the QuietC in-ear monitors themselves. Okay, quickly, let's talk about the specs of the Rose Technics QuietC. So these in-ear monitors pack a single dynamic driver inside of 10 millimeters. It's got an impedance of 32 ohms. So again, although these would be categorized as low impedance in-ear monitors, as always, I would suggest that you do invest in a portable DAC, nothing too expensive, just something to make sure that these can perform to their full potential and you can get the full range of the sound and they can sound as good as they possibly can. And of course, the one I personally use will be linked in the description below. Okay, let's quickly talk about the build quality. So it's a mixture of zinc alloy on the faceplate and the side that is going to rest on your ear and resin. Now, these in terms of comfort, I would say that even though I have really tiny ears and I've seen some other reviewers complaining about the ergonomics of the in-ear monitors, I personally found these to be very comfortable. They had a very snug fit in my ears and even for long listening sessions, there was no ear fatigue and they were very snug and provided very good passive noise isolation. Now, one thing to note, which is a bit quirky about the Quiet C, is that the nozzle is an oval shaped nozzle, not the typical round one. So the silicon ear tips that come with it also have a oval opening. So any other uh, silicon ear tip that you have lying around that obviously is gonna have a round shape, that is not gonna fit this. So if you wanna change the ear tips, it's gonna be a bit of a search. So that is one thing that, that is kind of a negative. I don't know why they went with a oval nozzle, which is kind of weird. But in terms of comfort and the fit, it was A-OK. -okay. Now, one thing that I really have to mention that I'm really a fan of is the cable. So these have braided cables and I have a ton of in-ear monitors lying around, some that are cheaper, some that are far more expensive, but there is something about this braided cable that feels so robust and formidable. It is thick and it gives you that assurance that it's gonna last for years on end, even with daily wear and tear. And as a bonus, it detangles very easily, even if it's jumbled in your pocket, they don't stick to each other like your typical silicon or rubber cables. So that is a very good bonus and I just, I'm a fan of the cable quality here. Okay, now let's get into the main criteria, which is the audio quality. Now, if you're an existing viewer, you would know that I judge these in-ear monitors based on how they produce the three main frequencies that broadly make up any sound that you hear. The highs, the mids, and the lows. The highs or the treble where the really sharp sounding instruments are, the mids where the vocals are, and the low end or the bass response. Okay, starting off with the treble response or the high frequencies, the treble response was very detailed with ample sharpness and clarity without getting sibilant. So it showcased very well control over the higher frequencies, even the cheers of crowds and the string instruments which fall into the higher frequencies were very well rendered with a lot of clarity and technicality as well. Now for the most part, it preserved the technicalities quite well. The subtle nuances were rendered quite impressively but what I noticed was that on certain tracks, if you're not using any sort of EQ to mitigate certain limitations, the sharpness could be on the higher end. So while it is not treading into uh, the realm of uh, sounding sibilant, it however tends to sound just a bit on the sharper end. Now mind you, this is on certain tracks, not on all, but it's definitely something I noticed. But overall, the treble response was detailed ample clarity, good separation between the instruments without any sort of overlapping, 
and very good control. Next up, we have the mid frequencies where the vocals are. Now, this is where it was kind of a hit and miss and it kind of swayed between good and not so good. So let me explain. See, male vocals naturally should have warmth and depth and female vocals should sound pristine and not sound sibilant. Now, what I found was that at times, although overall the male vocal sounded quite natural, maintaining a neutral or natural tonality with acceptable amount of depth in certain tracks, the male vocal sounded a tad bit synthetic. It was as if there was this superficial layer of sharpness or processing that didn't make it sound all that natural. Now, this doesn't happen on all tracks, but in certain tracks, this was quite evident. Now, this gets amplified in female vocals on certain tracks because female vocals naturally don't have as much of a depth and warmth as male vocals have. So they sounded a bit more processed and more sharp than they should be. But again, on certain tracks, male and female vocals for the most part sounded very natural, maintaining natural tonality and there was adequate bit of warmth in the male vocals. Now the strum of guitars and string instruments sounded very enjoyable. They were quite rich and sounded very natural without any sort of artificial sharpness. Now for an average listener, all that I mentioned wouldn't be much of a botheration because you get clarity and detail and adequate warmth. So you'll get by. But for a seasoned listener, you'd be able to pick up these drawbacks and that might be a bit of a disappointment. Finally, we get to the low end or the bass response. Now, in general, the bass response is, I would say, quite neutral without any exaggerated emphasis, without making it sound too boomy, and it is mid-bass heavy, so the mid-bass slam is definitely noticeable. However, I did notice that the DK of the low end, especially the mid-bass, was not as smooth as I would want it to be. So it kept me wanting for a bit more lingering of that low end so that it sounded more smooth and a bit more immersive. Now, don't get me wrong. The bass response is definitely present. You do feel the thump. You do feel the slam, like I mentioned, but it's not overdone. So I would say it is more or less catered for a purist in a sense and definitely not for a bass head. So if you're a bass head, stay away. Now, this review that you got from me or this feedback is based on the actual sound of these in-ear monitors without applying any sort of EQ to tune or tweak the sound. However, because how you like your audio signature is a very subjective and it's based on personal preference and it should be tuned to how you like to listen to music. So I applied the rock EQ from my phone, from the music player, and I found that this basically hits the sweet spot for these in-ear monitors. The highs became more subtle, maintaining richness without getting into that extra bit of sharpness that I mentioned. The vocals became more mellow. They got an added layer of warmth and it sounded far more natural and thus made it more immersive. And of course, the bass is where the majority of the change took place because it sounded much more formidable. The slam got even harder. It got even deeper. And overall, it gave you the entire package and it was a far more immersive experience than the straight out of the box audio signature. Okay, just to summarize, the Rose Techniques Quiet C is a pair of in-ear monitors that plays it safe overall without emphasizing on any particular frequency. I would say it's a good starting point for someone who's just getting into the realm of audiophiles or in-ear monitors. For them, it is good. And even for someone who is on a budget and wants something with a neutral sound signature, the Quiet C isn't a bad starting point. So there you have it, guys. That was my in-depth review of the Rose Techniques Quiet C. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other questions regarding this, do hit me up in the comment section below. As always, I'll leave a link of this product in the description below. You can check it out from there. And I would really appreciate if you use that link to make your purchase because it's not going to cost you anything extra, as always. But if you use that link, it will help me run this channel and I can produce more such high quality and helpful content just for you guys. So thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share this video, and as always, I'll catch you guys very soon in the next one. Cheers.